pictures. I do not think I did thermodynamic consistency, I mentioned it. reverse osmosis and then um, boiling point elevation and freezing point depression okay we will discuss thermodynamic consistency first the idea is the following if you look at the Gibbs Duhem equation looking at uh, I will write the expression for T of G excess by RT. I have to write this in capital letters. Or D of G by by G excess, I mean. delta G minus delta G ideal mixing. If you would England students have come. If you are looking at vapor liquid equilibrium, let us say in particular you are looking at a binary system, the number of degrees of freedom is simply 2 minus 2 plus 2, 2 phases. So, I can write this as D of G excess by RT first of all is equal to minus H excess by RT square DT plus P excess by RT DP plus mu excess by RT is exactly log gamma 1 Tx1 minus log gamma 2 Tx2. Remember this mu excess by RT is mu minus mu i ideal this is simply log gamma i and if I divide by the total number of moles mm, dividing it for a closed system if I divide by the total number of moles then I simply get log gamma 1 d x 1 minus log gamma 2 d x 2 no plus sorry no minus here this is plus. Since there are 2 degrees of freedom there are either you can consider isothermal VLE in which case this term is 0 or this is 0 for isobaric. In any case you get D of G excess by RT by D x 1. is equal 
equal to log gamma 1 by gamma 2 log gamma 1 minus log gamma 1 gamma 2 into dx1 dx2 is minus dx1 plus epsilon dx1 I am sorry just epsilon where epsilon is either epsilon is h x s by r t squared minus h x s by r t squared d t by d x 1 or it is v x s by r t d p by d x 1. If 2 degrees of freedom, so the degrees of freedom that I use either I do isothermal VLE in which case temperature is constant the other variable is x 1. So, if I treat T and x 1 as variables in a two in a system with 2 degrees of freedom d g x s by d x 1 will be this plus epsilon where epsilon is simply v x s by r t d p d x 1. So, sometimes written as epsilon t this is usually written as epsilon p and this is epsilon t this means at constant temperature epsilon is v x s by r t d p by d x 1. Now, if you integrate this over x 1 the left hand side is simply d g x s by r t from x 1 equal to 0 to 1. So, you will simply get g x s by r t sorry from x 1 equal to 0 to x 1 equal to 1 this is equal to integral 0 to 1 log of gamma 1 by gamma 2 d x 1. this left hand side is clearly 0 left hand side is simply g x s at x 1 equal to 0 and x 1 equal to 1. So, it is clearly equal to 0. So, you get the conclusion that log gamma 1 by gamma 2 d x 1 integral 0 to 1 should be equal to got a minus here. So, minus 0 to 1 epsilon d x 1. Now, this term is approximately 0 experimentally h x s by r t squared is very small and so is v x s by r t both these terms are usually small. So, you get the integral of this over d t d x 1 to d x 1. So, because these that is why the symbol epsilon was used because this is approximately 0 this is a test of consistency if you have data experimental data on gamma 1 for example, you can cal calculate gamma 1 from experimental measurements on pressure composition of the gas phase and composition of the liquid phase. So, this comes from experimental data if you have experimental data on gamma 1 gamma 2 you can plot log gamma 1 by gamma 2 versus x 1 the area under the curve should be approximately 0 actually if you actually do the plotting you get log gamma 1 by gamma 2 versus x 1. If you go to x 1 going to 0 gamma 2 is 1 you get log gamma 1 infinity that will be the, the limit here. So, let us say log gamma 1 infinity is somewhere here and log gamma 2 infinity is here. So, you will get a curve like this this area there is a positive area and a negative area this area we will denote this area by p this area by n to indicate positive and negative areas. So, the experimental 
the integral test for thermodynamic consistency. As I told you earlier, people used to use the experimental data to verify the Gibbs Duhem equation. Now the Gibbs Duhem equation is so well established that they test for consistency of the data. Have you measured the data correctly? You measure y1, x1, etc. If you have errors in the measurement, then it won't satisfy the integral test. The integral test says if p is the positive area and n is the negative area, p p plus n right, divided by p plus n this is algebraic quantity that is a negative area this is a positive area is less than a prescribed amount say 1 percent depending on the if then data is said to be consistent said to satisfy the integral test this test is called the integral test of consistency because you are taking an integral over the entire composition ring. The original differential test is simply this of course, this is almost never satisfied by the data simply because it is too hard to apply. This is your Gibbs Duhem equation. If you can verify at every point that this sum is 0, that is called the differential test. Usually, differential test is satisfied to plus or minus 20 percent because you, are, you have to plot log gamma and take the slope with respect to x1. These the slopes are very difficult, the scatter in the points will be so much that it will be very difficult for you to get an accurate slope. So this this differential test is to van is due to van ness in somebody, but this is normally not used. For want of accuracy, for calculating slopes. It is possible there are instances of data, there is a journal called journal of chemical engineering data. And this has a large number of data, it will be it is exceptional cases where the differential test will be applied, but the integral test is almost always applied. This goes under the name of thermodynamic consistency and experimental data will always whenever you report experimental data you have to show that they satisfy the integral test otherwise they would not even accept it for publication. This is one thing I omitted to discuss the other issues this is all this is for solvent solvent systems. I have discussed it for binary you can actually discuss it in ternary and so on as far as you are concerned you just need to know what is thermodynamic consistency and how you would test a binary system for data. The other omission as I told you is reverse osmosis is far too important the process is also a nice plant in a place called Naripayu this is in near Madurai and it is a beautiful plant BHEL has constructed this plant what it involves is taking the there they are using grid power not photovoltaic. I am suggesting photovoltaic because grid power is also in short supply in India. Also drinking water supply is a need that is distributed there is no point in saying I will have 300 million tons of drinking water here in Chennai and then I will supply it to obscure villages it will never get there. So the whole idea is to have a series of plants and one of the biggest problems in reverse osmosis is the membrane. Let me just describe the thermodynamic principle and then I will describe the plant for you. Let us say you have a membrane as usual thermodynamics do not have to be practical you can make drawings just to indicate this is a membrane the process. So I have here I want H 2 O plus salt here this is component 2 this is component 1 this is just pure water.
ideally what I would like is sea water to come in and for me to take out pure water. Typically the TDS the total dissolved solids and water that you drink is about 300, 400 it is very acceptable for portable water but TDS in uh, reverse osmosis water will be about 60, 70 very low less than 100 and if water has very low TDS it is said to be very soft and it is an excellent solvent. So very low TDS water cannot pass be passed through mild steel pipes and the curious thing about Naripayur is the following the state government wanted a this is a backward village and they wanted drinking water supply for this. So they put up an experimental unit I think it is quite a large unit I think it is almost 1 million litres per day and uh, they set up this plant BHEL set up this plant it is a reverse osmosis plant so what you do is take brine the process is something like this you have to take brine from sea water you will have a pump that pumps this out this is C and this brine is passed through a lot of processing the final unit is a membrane unit I should have brought you a I do not know if I have the no, I left my stick in this I have uh, photographs of this membrane I will show you the membrane unit essentially consists of tubes because you need very large surface area each of these there are tubes like this inside each of the whole thing is a cylindrical tube of about 1 foot diameter the one you have here in the hostel is about 1 foot within which there is a large number of tubes made of membrane semi permeable membrane the semi permeable membrane is such that it will let water through and no salt through. So if I am doing an equilibrium between these two phases for at thermodynamic equilibrium you have mu 2 on the, this is alpha this is beta alpha is equal to mu 2 beta for the moment let me assume that in fact the pressures will be different let us assume the pressure here is P and the pressure here is P prime the temperature is T mu 2 alpha is the chemical potential of water so you I have to write the chemical potential of water in the mixture so it will be at T and P plus RT ln gamma 2 x 2 that is the chemical potential model for water in solution on the right hand side it is pure water so it is mu 2 pure I do not need alpha here sorry this is liquid mu 2 liquid pure if you like this is also mu 2 liquid pure but this is at T and P prime in fact if the pressures were the same these two will cancel you will get log gamma 2 x 2 has to be equal to 0 so gamma 2 x 2 has to be equal to 1 so x 2 will be 1 which means essentially what will happen is if they were at the same pressure all the water will come this side it will keep diluting the solution till it gets more and more dilute and all the water will be on this side you actually want it the other way around the equilibrium process will cause water to come back in here so you need a pressure difference p minus p prime to drive the water this way that can be calculated from here you get log gamma 2 I will complete that picture in a minute log gamma 2 x 2 is equal to this minus this right is equal to mu 2 liquid pure at T P prime minus mu 2 liquid pure at T and P you know delta mu 2 by delta P is simply the specific volume of the pure substance and water is practically incompressible so this is simply V 2 liquid pure V 2 liquid into P prime minus P this is written as V2 liquid into pi with a minus sign 
because P minus P prime is called the osmotic pressure. So there is three lines it is a definition P minus P prime is pi and pi is called the osmotic pressure. Yeah. No, this is all right. Oh, this one is RT here. Thanks. You can get an idea in practice. You have to take gamma two into account. But for the moment, let's just assume for sufficiently dilute solutions. And sea water is not really sufficiently dilute. You have to actually do the calculations with gamma two. Dilute solutions, your log x two, log gamma two x two is approximately log x two, because x two is approximately one. X one goes to zero. X two goes to one. Tending to one, not exactly the limit. So this gamma two becomes one. When x two goes to one, so you get approximately log x two, which again is equal to one minus x one. Log, I'm sorry, log of one minus x one, which is minus x one. Which is approximately minus x one. This is equal to minus v two. Liquid into pi by R T. So your pi, the osmotic pressure, is R T by V two liquid into X one. To give you an idea of the order of magnitude, let's calculate this in atmospheres. R is For this system, 80, approximately 80. Temperature. Let's take room temperature. My V2 liquid is 18 into x1 to mole fraction of salt. How much does this come to? This is 940. This is about 33. Thousand three hundred into x one. If your mole fraction of salt is point one, we are talking of one thirty atmospheres pressure. Actually, typically for salt water, for sea water, the osmotic pressure is about seventy five atmospheres. So the engineering challenge is, you have a semi permeable membrane. This membrane, by its very structure. For example, there are two kinds of membranes. There are polymer membranes are made by Dupont. So actually, the first manufacturer of these membranes was Monsanto. Now the largest manufacturer is Dupont, and there are many other companies. Many are hidden Duponts. They are all subsidiaries and so on. And then there is a cellulose state membrane. I forget the polymeric membrane's exact name. There is a polymeric one, and there is a cellulose state one. This is non-biodegradable. This is degradable. This is biodegradable. Cellulose state. The membrane has cannot have pinholes. If you have pinholes, you will get all the salt water coming through. So you are talking of a membrane that does not permit salt through, but permits water. The size difference, after all, is quite small between sodium chloride and water. So you are talking of membrane that has. It's like a molecular filter. It filters out the sodium chloride, sends the water through, but it also has to withstand a pressure of about seventy atmospheres. This typically x one will be about. You can calculate x one seventy by thousand three hundred seven by one thirty, about point oh five percent. 
is for x1 is 0 0.05 if it is sodium chloride you are talking of uh, x1 is moles of sodium chloride uh, into what is the molecular weight of sodium chloride in CL is what 30 pardon 58.5 okay let us say approximately 60 if you are calculating moles if m is the molality it means it is uh, moles per 1000 grams of solvent by 1000 by 18 x x1 is simply m by this sorry uh, this is correct m by 60 now this is moles per 1000 grams of solvent so plus m that is all so if this is 0 0.05 this is about 55 0 0.05 so m is what m is approximately 55 into 0 0.05 27 0 0.275 no 2.75 grams per 1000 grams of solvent or into 60 would give me 120 plus 45 165 grams per 1000 grams of solvent. roughly 15 percent by weight so sea water is that composition so you get about 70 atmospheres for this and for 70 I just tell you this is about 70 atmospheres for sea water for brackish water that you take from the ground the value comes to about 20 atmospheres. So reverse osmosis plants will differ because you have to have a membrane that is mechanically supported it is usually supported with uh, metallic or ceramic supports which will essentially still allow this water to come through the membrane should not tear it should not have pinholes you have maintenance problem continuously right now we do not have a membrane manufacturing unit here. You must know that these membrane units are also used in dialysis. We have actually done a piece of work here. I just mentioned that to you because it is an interesting problem for chemical engineers. On a large scale, it is much harder to try, but let me explain this. The membrane units are like this. I will get you a picture of this. I'll, this is uh, each of them is called a lumen, and each of these is millimeters in thickness. I mean this each lumen is only about 1 millimeter in radius so you are talking of very thin membranes which are kept all over the place there will be thousands of them in one bundle and all of these will be inside a shell so what will happen is you will have a tube like this let us say this is the inlet this is the outlet you have a series of tubes through which liquid will pass the shell side you will get out the water alone will come out this is sea water pure water will be taken out here this will be concentrated brain now this unit is there in your hostel what you will see is the outside shell the ceramic shell water that comes out is concentrated brain in in your case you are actually using you are not bringing in sea water you are using brackish water so we have a bore well that picks up the water that is at something like 800 TDS and then it goes through this unit this will come out much higher concentration you can calculate by mass balance this will come out at about 40 the problem with reverse osmosis is it would not give you it insists on giving you a certain quality of water you will get 50 60 TDS although you are satisfied with 300 the membranes do not make that compromise the membranes will give you 60 but let me come back here this membrane the question is the same thing happens in in the case of dialysis artificial kidney in the artificial kidney this is your blood 
plus urea blood containing urea here you get pure blood out here you get urea out which is a waste in this case you do not have this problem. These are the lumens inside each lumen looks like this it is called a lumen and each lumen is about 0 0.5 0 0.2 mm diameter Point two mm varies. The main advantage of a small uh, large number of small diameter tubes is the surface area you get that is what gives you the productivity. So, the urea is removed and wasted urea is a larger molecule than any of the most of these chlorides. So, what they actually do is they use a dialysate outside the solution outside the pipe will be identical with blood except for its urea they do not need the the blood consists of also proteins proteins would not come through anyway. So, you can leave the proteins out, but all the other components you will match the composition of the individual's blood. So, they have this with labeled with the patient's name because it is reused and the outside solution is prepared exactly to the same specifications as this blood here except for the urea. So, the only thing that will come out of this thing is urea and there is a rule that not blood should not touch any of the other parts. So, the whole thing is done in uh, PVC uh, this thing which is known to be biocompatible a special PVC material is used for the piping and when the blood is taken out it goes directly into this there is a peristaltic pump the way you pump this is there is a the pipeline the tube goes through this the tube from the patient will go through this but there is a cam arrangement as this rotates every time it will pinch the my drawing is terrible of course. These are two solid surfaces as it pinches it as it rotates it will pinch it and send out a pulse. So, the these pumps these peristaltic pumps are used for this there is no contact of the blood with any other thing ok. So, the reverse osmosis is a very important part and I think for desalination it is going to be the way to do it because one of the most reversible ways of you can calculate the work here the work here is simply the volumetric flow times the pressure difference right w s dot is simply pi times the volumetric flow v dot of flow and you can calculate that work you will find that is much smaller than the comparable processes of uh, evaporation for evaporation you have to supply 540 calories per gram and for freezing you have to still supply 80 calories per gram. In addition to that for freezing you have a unit you have the Carnot efficiency because you have two you are essentially talking about a heat pump. So, if you take that into account you will come back to 540, but with multiple effect evaporation you can do with about 50 to 60 calories per gram here it is even less because the osmotic pressure you are talking of flow per gram uh, you are talking of 118 this is uh, you all you have to do is take 1 gram of the flow which is 1 cc into pi 70 atmospheres. So, 70 into 70 cc atmospheres 70 cc atmospheres will come to what less than 2 calories as compared to 50 calories if you have a multiple effect evaporator with a factor of 10. So, in principle this should be much less but there are hidden costs when you make comparisons like this you have to take the energy for making the membrane you are paying there right here it is less but you have to take the membrane manufacture plus this to together to find out what the costs are.